So welcome to our second webinar in our Partnering with Nonius series. My name is Tony Tizard, Head of Business Development at Nonius, and I will be your host today. Today's webinar is all about our mobile application solutions, which revolutionize the way you engage with your guests and how they engage with the hotel. On the webinar, I'm supported by Manuel Lima, who is our unit director responsible for the mobile portfolio. Manuel will guide you through the mobile solution and show you how you can increase communication between hotel and guest, as well as increase revenue and save costs for the hotel. At the end of the session, there'll be an opportunity for you, up for you to ask questions and have them answered live during the session. More personal questions can be raised at any time after the event if they are not suitable for public discussion. So without further ado, why are we here? Apologies to those of you that joined the previous webinar and have already heard some of this pitch, okay? But Nonius has been supporting hospitality businesses for the last 16 years and has worked both directly with hotels and end users, as well as the global partner channel. As a solution manufacturer, a software house, we have solutions that very much enable our reseller network to solve more of their clients' problems with tailor-made solutions. This series of webinars is designed to show you, the reseller channel, what we have available to support you on your next solution opportunity. Using a tiered pricing structure and bid management process, we correctly look after our channel and partners and support them to grow whilst growing sustainably ourselves. So, a little background about Nonius. Who are we? Every year, 120 million guests use our technology. Just think how many users access the Wi-Fi in a hotel reception. Just think how many guests turn on the hotel TV. This is how we arrive at these massive numbers. How do we do this? Well, Nonius have installations in 3,100 hotels and sites where there are 330,000 rooms. We have solutions in 85 countries. We are 125 people strong with staff largely concentrated in R&D in Portugal. We have 12 offices around the globe and we have 50 service partners. Okay, so now we're about to start the clever bit. I'm gonna hand you over to Manuel. Manuel is head of our mobile business unit and will take you through the solution as well as provide a live product demo. If during the webinar you would like to ask a question, please type it in the Q&A at the bottom and we will cover it in the Q&A at the end of the session. Manuel, over to you. Thank you, Tony, uh, for the great introduction and well, uh, thank you everyone for attending today. And as Anthony was uh, mentioning, so I will be presenting our mobile platform. Um, uh, that's a business unit within Nonia that's focused on developing um, uh, the mobile and the, get the hotel app solution. Um, and uh, basically, I will be showing you uh, the introduction on the platform, showing you some slides here uh, that describe the, the platform and its different modules. Uh, and then I'll actually be sharing my smartphone and play a little bit with the, with the solution to show you the, the check-in and then the mobile app and different functionality that you, the guests can use during the stay, just to give you a, a more uh, real idea of the experience for, for the guests uh, and the hotels using our platform. So, um, as Anthony mentioned, so Nonius works uh, worldwide with more, more than 3,000 uh, hotels. Uh, using our mobile solutions or our app solution, we have already uh, more than 400 hotels in 55 different countries. And basically, what we have created is uh, the Guest Journey mobile platform. So it's a, a set of tools that we're giving hotels uh, to allow them to create their own uh, digital guest journey for their guests um, according to the vision they have for the experience the, the guests should have within their hotel um, and then create that using our, our modular solution. Uh, and this can cover from prior to arrival with the pre-registration 
uh, and also then, of course, during the stay, to communicate with your hotel team to uh, control the experience, um, open the room door, check out, etc. And also after the stay, with some um, post-stay communication surveys, etc. It's a platform that's uh, developed for native uh, applications for iOS and Android. Um, and also a web based, so also have a web app uh, version for uh, some of, part of the functionality. Um, it's completely white label, so in the sense that it's the the brand of the hotel that stands out. It's not known yet, it's not uh, guess you the our product brand. It's uh, the hotel brand and it's the hotel app that the guests will actually access and, and install on their phones. So I think this slide. It's, uh, gives a very complete overview of what our uh, mobile solution is. Um, so it's a modular system, as mentioned, uh, meaning that the guests can, the hotel can pick and choose, let's say, the, the modules that uh, fit uh, the, the, the digital guest journey they would like to implement for their guests. Um, and we have organized this in these uh, different sections. Also, we have this top section of the Go Contactless, where basically are all the modules that can allow a, a contactless digital experience for the guests throughout their stay. Um, the first one, of course, is the base, so it's the guest application, it's the, the app that the guests will uh, interface with either by downloading uh, from the app store into their own phone or, or accessing the web app. But basically, it's where the guests will find information about the hotel services, um, information about the destination as well, city guide, useful info from the airport, etc. And the guest is also able to interact with the hotel to communicate, sending a chat message, making service requests, et cetera, no? all based on the hotel application. Then uh, we have the check-in and check-out. So functionality that is uh, integrated with the PMS system, uh, allowing to the guests prior to arrival to pre-register, submit all their information and all that to be integrated automatically into the PMS. Uh, and then during the stay to see the bill, the, the folio, the expenses, and also to be able to do an express checkout at the end. So confirming they accept the charges and instructing the PMS to uh, charge the credit card on file. Yeah. Um, then we have the mobile key. So it's um, integrated with the main door lock vendors. So currently you already have integration with Asabloy, the swing card with Dormacava and with Salto. Uh, and we're bringing um, 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 every few months new uh, door lock systems to, um, to our platform as well. And it's something that we can integrate based on project. If you work with a different uh, door lock vendor, we can look into that integration as well. The idea is, of course, to give a, a seamless experience for the guests using the hotel app to be able to enable the mobile key and to access the room door. Um, uh, without needing to install another application uh, uh, and just having that chance of replacing a physical card, let's say with the smartphone. Um, we then have the room control and a TV remote. So uh, in this case, uh, for room control, we integrate also with uh, vendors of um, domotics of room control, like Schneider, Interrail, Incom. Uh, and again, we can always add new systems uh, if the projects require so. Um, allowing the guests to control temperature, the air conditioning, the, the uh, curtains, blinds, lights, to set different type of preset ambience. So of course that depends on how the room control is um, designed and installed upon the hotel. But the idea again is to give a single interface to the guests, allowing him to use the hotel app for everything, including control the, the, the room. No? And the same thing with the TV remote. So the TV remote, it's integration with Nonia's IPTV solution, but that can also, uh, we can also look into integrating with other IPTV systems. But the idea is that the guests can turn on, off the TV, change the channel, everything using the hotel app. And finally, on this chapter of the soft phone, uh, that is the ability for the guests to have the, the room extension, uh, telephony extension on, on its smartphone. So. Uh, instead of using the handset in the room, I can enable the, the room extension on my phone through the hotel app. And this actually allows me to make calls, receive calls, even if I'm outside the room. So if I'm by the pool or at the gym, at the restaurant, 
we can still the guests can still be using the the app in the smartphone to work as the the room phone. Then we have this chapter dedicated to the F and B component. So um, through the app, it's possible to do room service orders, uh, allowing the guests to see the menu, to choose the items he wants to order, um, submit, and then. Uh, we have the, the ability to integrate with POS system as well. So in that case, we can actually import the products from the POS. And when the order is submitted, it can submit it back to the POS automatically. Uh, if not, we can work this without the POS integration in the sense that uh, there's the back office of our application where the hotel team is also the reception or guest services also managing the, the chat message, the requests, and they can also receive the, the room service orders and to handle them and to pass them to the kitchen or launch them on the POS manually. You know? So we have those two different scenarios. The contactless menu QR code orders is one of the features that we also have available on web app version and more designed for ordering at the table. No? So if I'm at the bar, at the restaurant, I could just scan the QR code. I can see the menu on my uh, browser, on my phone. Uh, again, can choose my items, make an order. And also in this case, it can be with or without a POS integration. Right? Then uh, the staff application, we have an app for the staff as well, actually a uh, mobile app and also a web-based solution to work on the, on the browser, on the computer. Um, where the hotel team can actually reply to the chat messages to the service requests of the guests to manage the orders uh, of food as well uh, and this uh, mobile app can also work as a soft phone for the staff meaning that as a staff member i can have my internal extension uh, on my smartphone i can call the rooms i can call other colleagues uh, using the the staff application um, Finally, this chapter of engagement and communication is where we have uh, the campaigns and guest feedback uh, module. So that's uh, a way to automate the communication um, with the guests. So basically based on the info we get from the, from the PMS, also based on the consent that the guests gave during the pre-registration, if you allows to receive communication during their stay, after the stay, et cetera, we are then able to automate communication to the guests either by email or by push notification if uh, the guests also install the, the hotel app. And uh, based on the guest journey, meaning that you can define campaigns that are prior to arrival, during stay or post stay. And for example, during stay, you can do this based on stay days, meaning that the first day of arrival receives this communication, one day prior to checkout or receive another one, uh, or based on weekday. So every Tuesday for guests that are in house at 5 p.m., we alert about um, um, uh, some event at the bar, etc. No? So all this can uh, be managed very easily on the on the app back office. So allowing the hotel team to actually create campaigns on the fly if they want, but also to program campaigns that can be valid throughout all the year with this uh, um, touch points with the guests throughout their journey. We then have a loyalty uh, module. That's uh, one of the projects we're developing this year. Actually creating, uh, well, we've done in the past already several integration with hotel groups with their own loyalty program or that are using already other platforms that can be integrated into the app to uh, show the card, to uh, allow the guests to log in with their membership number, et cetera. Uh, but actually in this case, we're developing our own uh, uh, loyalty module uh, that will allow them to create uh, uh, different tiers, uh, point system uh, to allow the guests to log in in the app, edit their profile, etc., and all based in our platform as well. Uh, and then the Wi-Fi landing page, so it's the final module here. Um, and it's uh, our platform also has the ability to create a web landing page that can be used uh, after the guest connects to the Wi-Fi in the hotel, it can be uh, on the hotspot or the captive portal, it can be redirected to this landing page. So the idea is to usually hotels are forwarding the guests to the hotel website, which is more focused on selling room nights and uh, cam cam campaigns more than on the for, for a guest that's already in the hotel, that's already in um, uh, staying there and so the landing page can be with relevant information for the stay you know so the breakfast hours some uh, useful information about protocols etc 
So this is our modular system. Uh, it's a living organism in the sense that uh, each one of these modules has its own roadmap of evolution of things that we're bringing on to them to make them more those features more richer. Uh, and also we are adding new modules uh, every year also to the system. And I think an important highlight here is that an hotel that chooses to go with our system, even if they start focus on one, two, three modules app, we check in mobile key. I think that's one of the main uh, triangles we've seen a lot uh, throughout this uh, past year. Um, it's a scalable solution and the hotel can knows that he has a, a platform where in the future, if he wants to add room control or TV integration, etc., they're able to do that with uh, uh, in a very easy and, and quick way as well. Um, another very important highlight for our platform is that it is open by design, so meaning that it's designed to be integrated with other uh, hotel uh, softwares and um, to integrate with the hotel ecosystem. Uh, it's not a closed solution, of course, we don't want and we can't enforce the hotels to use only our uh, products for everything. So uh, it's important that our platform communicates and integrates with the other tools the hotels are already using to make sure that it's uh, useful and doesn't cause uh, friction to adopt our, our platform. So of course the PMS, it's uh, uh, one of the key ones. Uh, uh, here are just some examples. Some of the main PMSs are already integrated, but we have actually more than 40 already integrated, um, but also door locks, uh, room control, POS systems. We're also integrating with uh, uh, CRS, with CRM, with other um, solutions as well. And so um, we are, I think, at the moment, more than 100 integrations already. And again, based on project and what the client our needs are, uh, we have a team that's focused on these integrations. So we can always add uh, new integrations based on the project with, of course, a commitment for delivery of that integration to the client. Okay. So uh, one final highlight here I'd like to make is that our modular solution that's already developed and allow us to uh, have a very quick time to market in the sense that within four weeks, one month time, we can actually have a mobile app integrated with the PMS for check-in, for um, door lock opening, um, uh, live on the App Store and Google Play for guests to start using. Uh, and of course, then if there are new integrations that are required or if there's new custom development that the, the client requires, that will take us a, a longer lead time, a few more weeks to be able to complete those developments and do them. But all the software engineering, it's internal. So um, as Anthony was mentioning, great part of our team is R&D. Uh, and so we do have that capacity you know, to add new integrations, to add new custom developments. Um, and so it's something that we can always work with the with the clients to implement so. But again, I think one of the very strong uh, values and uh, propositions of our platform is that it is ready to be customized with your job branding, to activate integration with Opera, with Infor, with Asavoy, et cetera. And very quickly, in a few weeks, we can actually have a functioning uh, solution for the guests to start using uh, in those few weeks' time. Um, this is just an example. I mean, I think we've covered a little bit the part of this, but the example of how the, the guest journey can be. So you're sending an invite to the guest to do a pre-registration, uh, to the online check-in, for the guest to download the app as well, um, to ask the guest about their guest preferences. At the arrival then, uh, to allow the guest to enable the mobile key. During their stay, to use the guest assistant to see information about hotel services, about uh, places to visit around, to talk with the concierge to ask some recommendations, to make room service orders, to control the air conditioning lights, as we mentioned before, um, to view the bill during my stay and actually at the end to request an express checkout. And then after the stay, just two examples of what could be a post-checkout survey, a stay in touch a campaign being sent a few weeks later, uh, inviting the guests to return to the to the hotel with a special campaign. So just an example of a guest journey that can be implemented using our platform. But of course, uh, it's up to the hotel and the and our platform is flexible in that sense to design their own guest journey as they envision, and we can give them the tools to do so. 
Um, before switching to the live demo, I just wanted to briefly um, show you some references of clients that are already using our uh, platform. So uh, Pasan Hotel Group, so we're working with hotel groups, but also a lot of independent hotels. For example, of some groups, we have the Pastana Group with almost 100 hotels in 13 countries, um, using our mobile app, using the TV integration for TV remote, the door lock with Asa Bloy, the PMS is Opera in this case. And also we've done some, we've done some custom development uh, together with the Pastana team to integrate this with the Salesforce uh, marketing um, tool they are using to integrate with their own loyalty program API. So some developments we've done uh, specifically for this, uh, for this client as well. Uh, another group, we have the Belmont. So it's uh, 34 luxury uh, hotels in, in 19 countries, um, part of the Louis Vuitton group. And again, using our mobile app for the hotel group, uh, the online check-in, um, and some other functionality of the ones we've seen before also enabled on this project. Pent Hotels, another group of European based, based out of Germany, but also with some hotels in the UK and, and other countries with our app, also integrated with Opera. Uh, uh, Lorry Group, so this um, with hotels in um, UK and also on, on the USA, um, all five-star hotels so with sea containers, rigs, and other uh, two hotels that are, um, uh, well, actually the Lyle hotels also activated now in Washington with our platform, and also they are adding a new hotel in London. Um, and online check-in integrated with Opera, the app, the door lock integrated with Asabloy, the checkout also with Opera. Uh, so it's also a very complete project. And actually we're adding also the soft phone functionality as the PBX, the telephone system is also provided by Nonias in this, in this project. Prince Akatoki, another hotel in London, part of the Stay Well Group, it's an Australian based uh, group. They have this new brand called the Prince Akatoki with this already live site uh, since last year in uh, uh, in London and are actually opening two more sites that will also deploy our platform of TV and uh, the mobile um, in uh, China and in Thailand, in Guangzhou and Bangkok. And then, well, other examples, I'll just go quickly. Uh, uh, some IAG brands, some hotel resorts, in this case in Brazil, hotel resort in Mexico as well. And of course, you can always have a look at our website where, where we have more customer references on the mobile platform page and some case studies that you can look into. So I will now switch to the live demo. So actually I will be um, sharing my smartphone here. Just a second. So what you're seeing now, it's the, the phone I'm mirroring that I have it here with me. And so let's start with the email invitation. So it's just an example of how the, the journey can start. So once the reservation has been created via direct booking or booking.com, Expedia, et cetera, it will be created in the PMS, of course. And then from that moment on, our system using the PMS interface will receive the information that that reservation exists. And we can actually trigger um, an email invitation um, three days prior to arrival or seven days and then a reminder one day before inviting the guests to do a pre-registration so to do the online check-in so it's a completely customizable email so this is just an example of course but the branding the image the colors the any text you see here everything is can be adapted so this is just an example um, a key thing about this email is that we are actually including here uh, a link, uh, in this case on this button, that's a unique link for each guest and that will um, direct the guest to a web app in this case. So at this stage, we're still not forcing the guest or, or, or asking him to invite the application. We're just simply directing him to the, um, to the unique page for his online check-in. So I already see here my name, John Smith. We have the check-in, check-out date, reservation number. I can choose to start the check-in process. And I will find the form here. This is, just, again, just a demo. So everything here is customizable, which fields to be asked to the guest, which ones are mandatory, which ones are optional. 
Um, they can vary if it's a national or international guest as well. And all this is mapped to, to the PMS uh, fields on the guest profile and reservation um, so that they are automatically updated once the guest uh, uploads and submits the information here. Um, being a bi-directional integration, it also includes here any information that already exists in the PMS. So for example, if it's a recurrent guest, the profile is already updated with the address, the passport number, etc. The guest will actually see that information here. It just needs to adjust anything if needed and submit for to complete the online pre-checking process. So in this case, we just have the name, the nationality, and I can then complete the remaining information birth date, uh, well, birthplace, uh, the passport number, issue date, expiry date, etc. No? So all the fields are optional in this case, as we are just, uh, uh, just for a demo. One important note here is on the email address. So uh, this system is also compatible with OTA reservations. So uh, for example, booking.com will not um, provide you the real email address of the guest, but it will give you this proxy email address, like a, a fake address that actually redirects to the guest email. Uh, we can still use that proxy email address to send out the email invitation. So as long as it, as it exists on the PMS, we can use it and send out the email invitation. But actually our system detects um, it is a proxy email address, it's not the real email address of the guest. So it will erase it here. So the guest will see the blank field of email as mandatory, then he needs to fill in the real email address. And by doing so, when submitting the address, the email address of the guest will be replaced, uh, the proxy by the real one on the PMS as well on the guest profile. So it's also a great way to collect the, the contacts of the, of the guests. Um, address, VAT. So just examples of fields that can be actually ordered. So Martin consent, so it's also important uh, to be a, a GDPR compliance. The guest can choose yes or no to receive communication. Uh, we can have here also the privacy policy terms and conditions. So this is all the small print that you'd have on the physical registration card in the reception. You can actually mirror it here. In this case, these fields are mandatory, these checkboxes for the guest to be able to proceed. So he has to accept these terms and conditions, can be a safe deposit box policy, any kind of information you'd like to put here. And can confirm, we also have the arrival time. So it's uh, useful information for the front desk team to have that this indication. And actually, uh, we also receive from the PMS how many guests exist on that reservation. So in this case, there are two. So I can do the main guests and additional guests as well. If there were four, I would see four entries here. So uh, also based on the information that we receive from the PMS in this case. We then have this, uh, we call this guest preferences page. So it's an additional page that's optional to activate, but basically, uh, and again, fully configurable. Um, any question you'd like to ask the guests prior to their arrival to be able to better um, prepare their, their stay, you can use this page to do so using this touch point, this moment of contact with the, with the guests prior to arrival. So just some example questions here, if you'd like to book a car, uh, if yes, for which day, what time, how many people, um, if you have preference for a high floor or low floor, um, if you'd like to book a table at a restaurant, the same thing. And basically, if the guest confirmed, for example, yes, I'd like to book a table, this will generate uh, an alert to the hotel team and will be av available on the app back office for someone to follow up and mark it as completed once the, the, the reservation, the, the table booking or the car transfer is confirmed to the guest. So, so we've completed here the pre check in. We also have received now an email, it's a confirmation email. So the guest also, after submitting the online check-in, will receive a confirmation email. Um, again, can be adapted to any message you'd like to pass here. But usually this is a great moment to uh, uh, communicate. You can now install the mobile application to better prepare your stay. You can use it to use it to open the room door as a mobile key or to order room service or other uh, functionality during their stay, depending on what is offered on the app. Yeah? So, um, of course, this is 
Crossing Guest View. This is our demo application. I actually invite you all to install it. It's called Guest View. You'll find it both on Google Play and on App Store. Uh, and it's a fake hotel, the hotel, just to show an example of how the hotel app can look. But actually, uh, what the guests will see is not Guest View, is not known as, as mentioned before. It will be your brand, your icon, as it is your own application that's available on App Store and Google Play. Um, so this is just an example, of course, of the hotel app. This is uh, fully customizable, apart, of course, from the colors, the logo, the branding, all the images. You can also decide how to structure the information, how many sections, how do you want to organize it, so everything can be edited on the CMS. Um, we'll give all that initial support for the initial configuration. So as part of the project uh, deployment, we'll base on information from uh, what the hotel would like to see here, what they want to implement will help create the, the, the first version of the app. But then we also give a training to the hotel team and allow them to actually um, um, edit and uh, change real time the information without depending on us, even though we do have a customer success team that will always be there to support the client and to help them with any doubts and make any quick changes, etc. Um, so I would like to highlight three main uh, points or areas of this application. Um, one of them is uh, information. Of course, this is a, a great way to digitalize information, to present it to the guests in one single place at the hotel application. Um, and this can be information about the hotel itself, no? so about us, description. We can have the contacts of the hotel, the map with the location. This is always a dynamic map, so I can always see um, where I am now, how to get there, get directions integrated with other uh, mobility apps I have on my smartphone. Um, information about the facilities, uh, and if you'd like to put here, this can actually also link to other sections within the app, about the restaurant, for example. Okay. Information about room, the room types, uh, descriptions, pictures, etc. Information about the hotel services, so I can see about the spa, um, about the gym, about the room technology. So again, just examples of how things can be here. Information about the restaurants, so I can actually see the menus, either uploaded on um, kind of a PDF file just to see um, the information there, or to see the schedule here, and to be able to uh, actually see the menu. Okay. So this kind of experience here. Another example, we can also do upload the menu on the back office and present like this. So uh, different options on how to present this uh, useful info. Then we have, of course, also information about the destination, um, uh, places of interest, what to visit around the hotel, restaurants around the hotel, routes, events. Uh, so you can actually create a customized city guide. We do have a library of many points of interest of all the main cities in the world already, and we have a content team that's updating that information. But the idea is also that the hotel can actually adapt this to what would be the recommendations to their guests, what their, what, the, what their concierge is already recommending on the reception to mirror it here as well, to give a, a personalized experience on these recommendations and not to simply be another TripAdvisor or Google recommendation. Huh? Um, so the point of interest are ordered by distance from where I am now. Uh, I can see, well, I'm far away on this case, I'm now in Portugal, but uh, uh, you can see here the distance for each point. If I move around London, I will see what's closest to me every time. And for each point, you can actually uh, access a description, the images, you can have the map as we saw before. Uh, we can also have some kind of integrations here with uh, uh, direction with Google Maps or Apple Maps or ride with Uber, uh, view with City Mapper, et cetera. No? Apart from this tiles view, we can also have it on the map view. So I can actually see the map of London with the different points here for the different categories, shopping for fun. For each one of them, again, I can access and see the info. 
So as you can see, a very complete uh, solution there as well. Same thing for restaurants. So again, it's another screen with points of interest. In this case, focus on a category. Uh, routes, we have some New York routes as an example on the app. So a route basically is a collection of points of interest. So we can have uh, a description of the route initially, then we can actually recommend one, two, three, a little bit the, the, the path to the guest. And this can be a walking tour. This can be the collection of the best beaches around uh, the area, museums, etc. Uh, and also events, the same thing. So we can actually have events organized by date, etc. Finally, to close the information chapter, let's say we have also useful info. So about the flight. So it's the nearest airport and I can see arrivals and departures in real time. This is some live feeds that we have integrated with the app to allow to see weather, news, etc. No? So just also useful info, info about protocols the hotel is adopting. So um, as you can see, just some examples of how complete the app can be regarding providing useful info to the hotel, to the guests during their stay. We then have the communication piece No, So basically um, during my stay, I can have a chat conversation with the guests, with the hotel, I can make service requests. So it's an easy way to request service and to communicate with the hotel team. Um, so for example, and this can be uh, a room service order. Now if I want to do a room service order, then I need to, as you can see so far, I've navigated on the app without needing to log in. So it's open by design. So people that download can actually see information about the hotel, but then we can lock some of the screens and functionality. We need to lock them for real guests or authenticated guests. No? So room service being one of them, I can validate my stay. I get the confirmation then, okay, welcome Mr. Smith here from room 104. And now I can actually see the access to the room service menu. No? And I can see, for example, food, I can order a club sandwich, add it to my cart, can keep shopping. I can also ask for a salad. And this can be with or without images, so it's flexible as well in that sense. And we can also add drinks here, Coke, for example. I can view the shopping cart, so I see the items I've added. I can actually edit them, changing the total value here. I can remove one of the items if I want to, adjusting the cart. And then I can also confirm the order, request was sent, room 104, uh, with instruction to charge the room in this case. I can also see my past orders here. So as I see the orders, the room service orders I did before, and to have that detail there. Uh, same thing is valid for other service requests. So for example, well, if I go here to my guest assistant icon, I can have a chat. So I can actually start a conversation with the hotel saying, hello, I need a taxi. As you can see, there's a default message here. Hello, can I help you? This is automatically sent to the guest, but only if a guest starts a conversation, the hotel team will be notified. So. I'm just saying I need a taxi here. So the message is now sent by the guest here. And then we have requests. So for example, we have some shortcuts here of service requests. So I can ask, for example, for uh, a transfer. I have an optional field here to put my phone number. If I put it once, I don't have to reinsert it again. I have the date for tomorrow for two people at eight. I can send a request and the request is now visible here as well as uh, our latest request as a new status, meaning that still no one started to work on this. Yeah. And this is valid not only for these short, uh, shortcuts here, but also any section on the app, as you saw before, can be bookable. I can make a book to the spa treatment, um, the same thing for the restaurant. So I can actually book a table for two people for tonight at 9 p.m. I can add a personalized comment if I want to, please. We would like a table. 
to the garden, for example. And again, we see that the request has been sent. And in this case, then, if I go here on requests, I will also have the book table request I did visible here. And I will now be notified of the update regarding this uh, request. And I'll show you that uh, in a while. Um, just to show you a different example, of course, all these bookable buttons can be either a form like you saw now, and this will generate a request that is sent to the hotel team. It can be using some other third-party integrations like the room service that can send to the POS. Uh, we can actually integrate also with the other ticketing solutions or maintenance solutions uh, like uh, NoCross or Alice or other platforms that the hotel, if the hotel is already using and they prefer to use that, we can actually forward these requests to those systems. But it can also be a web view. So I can actually link to um, any other page, in this case, the fork or open table, I can just simply select the date, the time. But what I'm doing is I'm already navigating in a website that's not on the app. It's a web view of another third party uh, web widget. Uh, but actually, I never leave the app. I'm still here. As you can see the header, I can always go back. And it's an in-app navigation. Right? So um, the request, where, will, where, will, where does this information go to? Right? So basically, I will show you here the back office so as you can see this is the web-based version of the back office we have the dashboard where you can see um, we have two active requests uh, also on read messages and chats so if i go here to the request i can see i have the transfer the book a table from guest smith from room 104 and we can actually change the status if we want to working now this generates an automated message to the guest, your request is being processed. Uh, we can also write a customized message saying, your table is confirmed next to the garden. Right? As we see, we have here the detail of the guest, the detail of the request, the comment that they had regarding the garden request. And we can send a custom <clears throat> customized message as well if you want. And this will be generating to the, to the hotel a push notification to the guests. And also will be visible here. <clears throat> There's something new. I can see now this is on working status and I have messages inside as well that I can see here. And I can reply, just thank you if I want to. And so this will actually then have this interaction here. I can also um, uh, change the... Finally, if I change this, so as you can see, we have two open requests now here on the green uh, circle. If I actually change this sorry, on the book of table, exactly. If I actually change this from working to closed, um, it notifies the guest the request has been completed. And now I only have one open request. And so if I go here, it is not no longer on my new and working list. I can still search for it for the close requests if I want to see the history, but it's no longer here. Okay. Finally, um, the chat is very similar. So, hello, I need a taxi. We can just say, for what time? And this will actually generate a push notification, as you can see here. So even if I'm outside the app, with the app closed, I'm on WhatsApp, etc., I will see a notification. There's a new message there. And we also have the notification here and the new message. Right? So it's a very easy way as well to interact between the hotel team and the guests. Right? Finally, we just uh, have uh, a few more minutes. Um, I would just like to show you to lead the, the third part. So we've covered information, we've covered communication, and other third parts of the, the control of the experience within the hotel, no? So the guest, as mentioned, he can use the hotel app to as a room key. So we have here the get room key uh, button. The guest can enable this to be used. It's possible to enable because he's already authenticated. So we validated with the PMS, it's a real guest, it's the room number, check-in, check-out date. And now we are communicating here with the door lock system to generate a key for this guest, for that room, for that period. Um, and from this moment on, I have an open door uh, button where basically it starts scanning. So just by putting the phone next to the door lock, it will unlock the door. 
And so this is this triangle between our app, the PMS, and the locked system, uh, where basically we also react to any changes on the state. So imagine there's a, the guest does an early checkout uh, one day before uh, the initial estimated departure. We will revoke the key and not allow the guest to use it on the app anymore. Uh, the same thing, uh, if it, there's a room change, the, the app will be notified. And so the key for the old room is not no longer available and the guest can enable the key for the new room. And so uh, it's um, a self-service uh, mechanism. So the guest doesn't need, the hotel team doesn't need to send out the invites and et cetera. The guest can simply download the app, authenticate with their reservation credentials. And then from that moment on, they can enable the key and access the room. Right? Um, we have the phone uh, functionality as well. So again, I authenticated myself once. So the app now already knows who I am, what's my room. So if I go to the phone I enable, then I can actually have my room extension here already active. I can make calls and receive calls. If I don't want to be disturbed, I can always turn it off here. But the idea is that I can actually use it, use this as a phone as well. Um, the bill. So during my stay, I can see uh, my bill or the room charges, the room nights here. But if I have any other additional consumption of F and B, etc., it will also be presented here. So basically, this is reading the information in real time from the PMS. So we're checking the folio of the guest and presenting it here. It's also configurable which folio to pre to present uh, uh, to avoid having uh, values of travel agencies here, etc. You can just have the folio with the expenses for the guest. And the guest can actually request a checkout, um, confirming he accepts these charges and for it to be charged to the credit card on file. Yeah. Um, so while well, room control and TV is basically allowing the guest to control also the experience within the, within the room. Uh, on the TV, you can actually see the, the grids with the channels. You can uh, see different uh, categories. Um, you can control volume, uh, turn on, off, navigate on the IPTV menu using the arrows. And also, if it is a um, uh, hotel that has video on demand, it's also possible to see the video catalog here, select which movie to see, the language, and to start seeing it on the TV. Okay. So just another example. Uh, with the key, the soft phone, the build and control TV of how the guest can also use the application is a very easy and seamless way to control its experience during their stay. And that was the third chapter I wanted to highlight. So information, communication, and this control of the experience of the guest during their stay. Um, so we don't have, uh, now we have this uh, final minutes for Q and A, and it will be a, a pleasure to answer any doubts you might have. And I hope you liked the, the demonstration uh, on the time we had was, uh, I think, well, we covered most of the, of the main functionality of the check-in and application. And Anthony, so back to you. Great. Well, look, thank, thanks a lot, Manuel. Thank you for showing us that. Um, and I guess to all of you, we've tried to make the journey from specification through to order and delivery as simple as possible. A mobile solution can be deployed in as little as four weeks from order with a few basic integrations. Of course, with more complex integrations, they, it can take a little longer than that. Our solution specialist will be happy to help you with specifying and quoting your opportunities. Please just reach out to me or your preferred non nearest contact to specify a solution. Um, okay, so during the presentation, lots of you were asking some questions. We will now go through some of those questions with you and provide answers. If you do not see your question answered, it's purely because we ran out of time or we feel you will need a more personal response. We'll follow up on all of these questions after the webinar, if not responded to live. So for the first question, um, we've got a question here from Ireland Manuel. I saw it pop up and it said, okay, uh, it basically said for the integration with PMS, do we need uh, an on-premise server or, or is everything in the cloud? And I think I know the answer, but Manuel, I'll let you take that for me, please. 
Um, well, so it will actually depend not on our platform, but more on the PMS uh, setup. You know, so our solution is cloud. Uh, it's cloud-based. Everything lives on the the Nonius Hub and our cloud solution. But then, depending on the PMSs that are used, if it's an on-premises PMS, um, uh, it also will depend if it's uh, the PMS, the interface we have with the PMS, if it requires us to have a, a access to a local server where the where the, the PMS interface is, or if it can be uh, a cloud one. Just a few examples. So for example, um, Muse, it's a cloud PMS, so it's no need to have anything on site. And it's a very simple setup to have the interface connected for us to receive all the information about the reservations, the stay events, et cetera. Um, if it's Opera, for example, part of the interface must be installed in a local uh, computer. And then uh, in that case, yes, we do need access to um, that machi machine, but we don't need to have our own server or, uh, or, or backend in the, in the hotel. So basically what we just need on that case is a, a secure a VPN, so a tunnel from our cloud to uh, the hotel site so that we can access that server. Uh, and uh, that can be usually provided by an already existing firewall or some equipment that the hotel has just to create this VPN from that network where, this, uh, where the local machine is to our cloud solution. Um, the same thing is valid for the, um, the keys. No? So usually, uh, actually, on the keys, uh, it's, the use case we implemented so far is always needed to have a local access to the server that's on site generating the keys, either it's Vision Online from Asaboy or, or from Salt or Dormacava system as well. Um, and in that case, uh, the same thing, we just need to have that <clears throat> tunnel, that VPN from our hub to the hotel network to be able to access that server to generate the keys, etc. Cool, thanks, makes sense, yeah. Okay, so for the, for the next question, can all these products be purchased in one package? Can you give a cost estimate? Okay, so I'll, I'll take that question. And essentially we offer modular pricing on our mobile solutions, okay? So whether it's the pre-check-in or, you know, part of the mobile key or something else. So everything's modular, okay? And basically we will provide a quotation to match your expectations depending on what you want. But you can have little, you can have a lot, or you can have the full works, okay? Um, question here, Manuel. Is the first email the guest receives sent in the guest's language? Uh, okay, it's a good question, yes. So <clears throat> we'll be sending out that email based on the language that is indicated by the PMS. So uh, if you have the language or nationality um, uh, defined on the PMS for that guest profile, for that guest, for that reservation, uh, we will adapt the email to be sent on that language. Um, and of course, this works, uh, for example, with, usually with clients, we might have three, four, five different email templates for each um, one for each language. Some cases have two or three, depends on how many um, uh, uh, templates you, you, you want us to configure. Uh, but for example, um, and then usually have English as default, meaning that um, if we have English, French and Spanish, for example, uh, if it's a, um, a guest that sees the, we have the PMS indication, it's a Spanish guest and we will send out the Spanish template. Uh, if it's a Korean guest and we don't have that language, we'll be sending out the, the English one. Also, one additional note there is that apart from the email uh, that's sent out based on that information, of course, of, that we receive from the PMS, because that's the only way we have to try to know the language of the nationality of the guest. Um, once the guest clicks on that button to access the, the check-in form, the web page, the, the web-based form, uh, actually our system adapts to the language of the operating system of the phone or the computer that the guest is accessing from. So meaning that imagine it's a Spanish guest, but uh, uh, it was a booking.com reservation. There's no nationality or language information. So we'll be sending out the English default one. But then when the guest starts to check in, the form will actually be presented in Spanish if the phone of the guest is in Spanish. So it's also a, a way to adapt to the language that the guest is usually using. Okay. Um, so next one, are these solutions compliant with GDPR? Okay, so look, I, I know for sure we're compliant with GDPR, but can you, can you expand any more than that, Manuel? 
Uh, yes, I mean, it's, the answer is yes. It's, uh, they are compliant with GDPR. So basically, uh, of course, we're, uh, uh, it's one of the concerns we have and also we adapted the solution to make sure it is fully compliant. Um, and not only we do comply with the regulation for GDPR, for the communication, et cetera, being sent, but also our tool, it's very useful for the hotels to, for them to comply also with the GDPR in the sense that we are actually being able to collect the contacts and the consent in a very structured way uh, from the guest. So using this uh, pre-registration form I showed you before, the guest will indicate the email, phone contact, et cetera, and also indicate the, um, if they accept to receive communication or not. And this can be mapped back to the PMS, this consents to have that information. And also our own uh, campaigns module that we commented before that allows to send automated communication will only send information to the guests that have validated that uh, consent. So uh, it's a secure and compliant uh, uh, system to, to make sure we are not sending out uh, communication to guests that is not supposed to. Great, cool. Looks like there's just one more question here. So uh, before, we, before we do that one, I'll just ask if anyone else has got any more questions, if they want to pop it in the Q&A and we'll, I'll, I'll check, okay? Um, but the last question, Manuel, it says to use the applications that control the devices in the room and temperature, et cetera, do you need a device that centralizes and sends the signals? Um, yes. So basically um, what we're doing is that we, we, we are integrating our app with uh, other providers that, are, that implement the room control system uh, in the hotel. And one of the requirements is actually to have a, a centralized gateway in the hotel that allow us to connect the app to. And from that gateway that we are able to then control the different um, room control units, the RCUs for each room for the different devices. No? Um, so we are not doing ourselves any uh, room control implementation on the hotel. That's uh, for our partners, like mentioned, like Interrail, Incom, neither other other providers that are doing so and uh, what the app needs is that we have this centralized gateway in the hotel um, can be an opc server or some other type of um, a gateway that will actually allow us to from the app to be able to tell us look uh, light up uh, light number two in this room or uh, turn off uh, raise the curtain on that room etc through this gateway but something that of course then again we do have some uh, the documentation on the requirements that we can also share with with you if you have any project on 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 this room control opportunity um and uh just uh, we're, we'll be happy to discuss that in more detail with with, with you thanks okay so there, there is uh there is one one or two last questions actually manuel okay so one's about our roadmap for loyalty program so it says when would the loyalty program be ready um, okay, so basically we have already a uh, um, first version being deployed uh, this month, uh, but we'll be adding more functionality throughout this year. So I'd say that, that by the end of the year, we'll have the, the, the full version of the loyalty program. Um, uh, currently, it's already possible to create member accounts to, for the members to see the card on the app, to edit their profiles. Uh, and now we'll be adding the, within this next month, we'll be adding the the tier mechanism and the points automation based on the, the information that we receive from the PMS of how many stays each guest had during the year to be able to assign a certain tier and points. And that's the work we'll be doing on the next month. So the expectation is that by the end of this year, it will be the complete solution. But we can also start uh, if there's interest in that model in the phased out uh, deployment with that as well. Okay, and then look, the very last question, so we can close and keep the time, okay, it says, is there any available timeline for the passport integration to the app for pre-check-in? Passport integration to the app. Um, so yeah, for we pre check in. Do, yeah, right now the guests can, of course, uh, introduce the passport data, as I've shown you. Uh, I imagine the question is regarding... Uh, uh, well, we'll actually be deploying now in, uh, by the end of July a mechanism to actually take a picture of the passport and to be able to send out to the hotel as well, as that is some required in some, uh, some of our markets, uh, forbidden in others where the hotels cannot keep an image of the, of the document, but it's something that we're deploying for a project and that, that will be available. Um, 
We, we then also have on, on roadmap an OCR capability that will be not saving the picture of the passport itself, but actually just uh, reading the information from the passport and filling in the form. So the guest doesn't have to introduce manually. Um, that OCR, we still don't have a timeline. I think it will depend a bit on the project that comes that will require that functionality. Uh, uh, but the, the one we'll have first will be actually the uh, keeping the picture of the, of the passport. Yeah. Sounds good, Manuel. I think we've got a few customers asking for that. So I think that's quite, quite good. Um, right, everyone. So our Q&A time has now ended. I respect you've all got other things to do as well. We're um, going to save some of your questions that we haven't been able to answer live and we'll come back to you um, on an email okay, after the event. All that remains is for me to say thank you for attending the webinar. Thank you to Manuel for his excellent demo and explanation. Hope you've all enjoyed it. The next webinar is on the 18th of August at 11 a.m. London time and will be all about non-EAS Wi-Fi and networks. Sure, everyone is a network specialist these days, but few have the hospitality grade solutions approved by many of the leading hotel brands. And even less partners or vendors give you the reseller channel full ability to resell it and provide your customers with up to 24 seven support via our knock. Please remember the date. We'll also send a reminder email. If you've got any questions about becoming a partner, please do feel free to contact me or your non -ES account manager. Thanks a lot. Thanks for attending. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.